The very gorgeous Jane Kennedy has done it all, okay? She is an American television personality, an actress, a model, a corporate spokeswoman, producer, writer, public speaker, philanthropist, and sports broadcaster. She believes in never selling herself short and always opening opportunities for yourself. When she couldn't find work, she would create the work for herself. However, as a black actress in the industry, there are not that many parts. So I've always felt that I would diversify my career as much as possible. I sing, I dance, I have the exercise programs, I have a line of exercise wear on Butterick labeled. Yeah, Jane you're heavily into your own business now. Yeah. yeah. Jane Kennedy became one of the first female network sports anchors in an era when hiring gorgeous women was just for ratings. As co-host of NFL Today on CBS from 1978 to 1980, the actress and former model was the first African-American woman to anchor a network sports program. She was everywhere, gorgeous. People were falling at her feet, worshiping her basically, right? Just stunning woman. And while everything seemed to be falling in place for Kennedy, this illicit tape of her and her ex-husband was leaked, effectively ending her broadcasting television work. And following their divorce in 1982, the tape was stolen from their home, allegedly, and leaked to the media. In the early 80s, a tape like that with a public figure like they both were, you know, it sullied her name. Her squeaky clean image was tarnished forever. And it's very sad because Jane Kennedy is not only an icon, and this was a private tape between her and her husband, okay? And I don't think there was any scandal of it. Her husband, her ex-husband, who is now a minister, which we're going to get into all of that in a video, went on to try to sue Ebony Magazine for Ebony Magazine pointing him out as the one who leaked it as a form of revenge because it came out after the divorce and it felt like it was kind of like a bully tactic. And though we don't know, I don't know. I'm just going based off what you know was said. And if you go on like Lipstick Alley, Reddit, Quora and stuff like that, you'll find a lot of people believe the same thing. It was like this rumor that was going around around that time that he did this to kind of shame her and sully her name. And it's very unfortunate. And I want Jane Kennedy to get the respect and flowers that she deserved for the work that she put in into that era because she put in a lot of work into that era. And she is a woman that more people should know who she is and her name in this generation. But usually when something like this happens in the past, the more modern generation tend to just like, they erase that person from history and you just don't hear about them anymore. And we're gonna reverse that, especially with the climate of today. I don't think this tape should have did the damage that it did for her. And in this video, we are going to talk about the alleged rumors with that, okay? But also her accomplishments, her childhood, all that she has done and the legacy that she continues to have. And we're gonna start from the very beginning with her childhood. But first, hey friend, welcome to my channel, Kareen Allude, where we deep dive and break down the most iconic stars through history. If you're not yet subscribed, please be sure to do so. And if you're already subscribed, please turn on your notification bell so you never miss an upload. Now, without further ado, let's get into this video. So Jane Kennedy, originally named Jane Harrison, was born in the small town of Wycliffe, Ohio on November 27, 1951. She was one of six children in her family, and not long after her birth, the family relocated to the suburban areas of Cleveland, Ohio. Her father earned a living as a factory worker, specifically working as a machinist. Her parents, Herbert and Virginia Harrison, instilled in their child to aim high, give God most of the credit, suffer disappointments silently, and avoid maliciousness. That's according to her own words. She was raised to have a very close relationship with God and contributes all of her success to him. God has been in my life all along. I didn't find God because of problems in my life. I accepted Christ in my life at age 13 and my family raised me to be that way. I have become more devout in my religion because I believe that one of the things, the best part about mistakes is you yeah. learn from them. I used to always pray, you know, well, I would like this and yeah. I would like that and that type of thing. However, I learned uh, that the most important thing is to pray to be happy. During her high school years, Jane was quite active. As a cheerleader, she cheered for her school's sports team, was a member of the National Honor Society. She was really, really smart. Held the vice president position during her sophomore year and served as the president during her junior year. In 1969, she attended a youth organization rally in Washington, D.C., where she made history by becoming the first black vice president of Girls State. The following year, she continued to break barriers when she became the first African-American Miss 
Columbus, Ohio. While many in her hometown of Wycliffe were proud of her achievements, not all of them were supportive. There were a little bit of haters, <laughs> leading to the removal of a banner that has been raised in her honor. Some townspeople thought that she was bragging too much by having the banner up. But like I said, there were just haters. Around this time, Jane started dating a well-known disc jockey from Detroit named Leon Isaac Kennedy. They eventually married in a ceremony where Smokey Robinson, a Motown star, served as the best man. After their marriage, they moved to Los Angeles where Jane began her career in television advertising. She also spent some time touring Southeast Asia with comedian Bob Hope, entertaining American troops during the final stages of the Vietnam War, and Jane eventually became a regular dancer on the Dean Martin show, which opened doors for her to appear in popular TV series like Shaft, Kojak, Sanford and Son, and Starsky and Hutch. Kennedy won the 1982 NAACP Image Award for Outstanding Actress in a Motion Picture for her performance as Julie Winters in the 1981 film Body and Soul, co-starring her then-husband Leon Isaac Kennedy. Kennedy won an Emmy Award for her work hosting the 1982 Rose Bowl. Kennedy Overton admitted to having a tough time as a black actress in Hollywood during this era. She said, and I quote, I like it when someone says you're intelligent or pretty, she said in an interview with Trescott in the Washington Post. But universal is a quality most people in Hollywood don't want to see in blacks. That's an appreciation of my talent. I did an episode of Police Women last year and I played an inmate, wore no makeup and had my hair pulled in a ponytail and the producer said, I like you because you want to work, you want to be good and that's the nicest thing anyone could say. She continued by saying, any magazine back then would say, no, we don't put black women on the cover, we don't hire blacks for this. I even had an executive, a producer at Warner Bros tell me, and I quote, there was a reason they didn't use blacks in movies, it's because if a black face appears on the screen, the audience will get sidetracked track and forget the plot of the movie. A couple of years later, I went in to that same studio to pitch a feature film that I wanted to produce. The executive spent the entire meeting leering at me, and after my, representa my presentation, he said to me, Oh my God, Debbie Allen was here pitching a project last week, and I was so infatuated with what she looked like that I don't even remember what she was talking to me about. I was so insulted, end quote. So she was going through it a lot, having to defend herself. And I was watching like old interviews, archived interviews of her, documentaries, even photographers that were taking pictures of her. And men would just, uh, you could see in her face, her body language, and she was over it. Because um, even this photographer that was taking pictures, of, he was just flirting with her the whole time. Let me put the oil on you. I put oil on my models. You know, it was a shoot that she was doing with like a tiger. And just watching her face, she couldn't wait to get out of there. She looked so comfortable. I just kept playing it back, looking at her body language like can I just do the work right so it was either that people overhyped her face to her and her beauty and just wasn't taking her too seriously that she had to assert herself Oh, or, you know, they just didn't take her seriously because she was a black woman. And I love how she handled every situation because even in that um, photography session where she was doing the shot with the tiger. She handled that so gracefully and dodged this man's flirtatious advances where it was supposed to be a professional setting. You're like this professional iconic photographer and you're like you know flirting with your talent who's here and then while she's working it was so uncomfortable but I just I watched how gracefully she you know dealt with that and how gracefully she used to reply to these interviews the questions they would ask her that would just be ridiculous at times or just you know a little um, sexist or colorist and things like that and she just navigated things so gracefully and I just knew she just had to be intelligent this was before I found out she was in the National Honor Society and so I was like yeah this is a very intelligent woman very classy and knows how to navigate very tough situations okay another fun fact about her is that she was also great friends with Muhammad Ali, which I did a video for Muhammad Ali, but I don't know why YouTube age restricted that video. So you guys probably don't even know I did it. I'll pin it in the comments for you guys on this video if you guys are interested because you know, anyways. So in an interview with SAC Cultural Hub, he described meeting Muhammad Ali for the first time and they were just friends there was never anything intimate between them Jane Kennedy was just that girl okay she said I had gone to a programmers conference in Las Vegas I'd heard that Muhammad was talking to a group of programmers at one of the suites at the hotel I walked into a room packed with journalists and photographers Muhammad Ali was sitting on the dresser entertaining the way he always does he looked over at the door and he said oh my god that's Jane Kennedy come here he pulled me over and sat me on top of the dresser with him and we just started talking 
talking. We became friends and remained friends for a very long time. He actually helped me get the job on NFL Today. I was initially signed to a six-week contract, hardly any pay at all, and on trial for six weeks with a promised to pick up my contract if I did well and renewed on a year-to-year -year basis. During the second week of my contract, Muhammad Ali had a fight coming up with Leon Sphinx in New Orleans. CBS Sports Spectacular had been trying to get the post-fight interview. I was in the studio on Friday and overheard a conversation with CBS Brass and their attorneys strategizing about how they could secure the interview. I said, I can get the interview for you and they all laughed. I told them to put me and a crew on a plane and I would bring the interview back the next day. So they put us on a private jet down to New Orleans and I called Muhammad and told him what I wanted. He said he would leave a key to his suite at the hotel and told me to meet him there immediately after the fight. I got my crew all set up in his suite and when he walked in, we were rolling. He walked over to the camera and said, I'd only do this for my friend Jane, end quote. I took the interview back to New York. It aired on CBS Sports Spectacular that Saturday and on Monday, I had my contract picked up end quote. That was really sweet. Muhammad used to do things like that for people also. And in 1981, Kennedy became the first black actress to cover Playboy magazine, but she elected to stay mostly clothed for her photo shoot. She then entered the world of fitness videos in the 80s with her Love Your Body series. Kennedy wrote and produced a popular series which competed with then popular fitness icons Richard Simmons and Jane Fonda. Jane Kennedy has always been a big hearted lady, lending her star power to many good causes over the years. She's often seen racing charity events and making rousing speeches that inspire everyone in the room and one of her notable appearances was in 1986 when she co-hosted the Lou Rawls Parade of Stars. This wasn't just any old gig, it raised a whopping 10 million dollars for the United Negro College Fund and in 1987 she was invited as the main speaker at the Martin Luther King celebration and even stint. She also lit up the stage with her words. A year later she became the face of the National Council of Negro Women. In this role she helped present a series of nationwide events called the Black family reunion celebration which included helpful clinics and seminars and the list goes on and in 1990, she was invited as a speaker at the 12th Annual Freedom Fund Dinner in Columbia, South Carolina. All in all, Jane Kennedy knows how to use her fame for good, and she's made a real difference through her support for these worthy causes. And unfortunately, we gotta get into the scandal. So Leon Kennedy, a big time actor in the 80s and former husband of the renowned sportscaster Jane Kennedy, it wasn't a heated legal battle with Ebony Magazine. The bone of contention was a steamy you know, XXX tape from the 80s featuring Leon and Jane that mysteriously made its way into the public eye. This wasn't just any old tape. It was one of the first celebrity tapes to hit the media. It was a big deal. Given Leon's fame from his role in numerous box rotation films and Jane's status as an NFL Today commenter, it just showed her, you know, it was showed a lot. It was a lot. The couple divorced in the early 80s and then out of nowhere, the explicit video surfaced online. Ebony Magazine started to the pot when they published an article implying that Leon was responsible for leaking the tape. The reaction from Leon, who is now a globe-trotting ordained minister, was explosive. He denied it with a lot of passion, okay? Stating that this tape was stolen and spread by an anonymous third party without his or Jane's consent. The real casualty in all of this is Jane Kennedy. Her once pristine reputation was shattered, causing her career to take a nosedive. And despite her best efforts, she struggled to recover as opportunities started to dwindle, adding to her woes. While filming the workout series Love Your Body in the early 80s, she was diagnosed with endometriosis, the severe pain of the condition only abated during her first pregnancy, but returned with a vengeance and she needed to have surgeries to remove her uterine tissue. And choosing to prioritize her family, she stepped away from the limelight and all the chaos and stuff. She remarried actor Bill Overton in 1985, with whom she had Savannah Reed, Copper Joy, and Zaire, forgive me if I mispronounced them. And she welcomed Bill's daughter Cheyenne into their family. And they just, a gorgeous family, beautiful kids. And reflecting on her decision, she said, I put off having a family because I knew that I wanted to be there for my family and I was traveling a lot. At that time, the industry was not ready to allow pregnant women the opportunity to still be on camera or on the silver screen. Today, it's a completely different story. But back then, I would have lost my contract. I would have never been hired again because people were not, were just not ready for that at that particular time. Now Jane is a doting grandmother and happy wife, living peacefully away from the limelight, and may she never be forgotten. Leave a fire emoji in the comments for this icon. I'm not going to comment on my opinion since he want to sue people with that, but it is kind of strange that it came out after the divorce, and I think it's fair that people can raise concerns and have their own theories on how did it come out, you know, and it just seemed very spiteful, very mean-spirited, you know, and 
I know couples do things they record themselves and stuff so it wasn't like she I don't think she was trying to be scandalous she really cared about her image you can see in how she presented herself and how she spoke and carried herself even now and it's just so heart-wrenching right to see that but she moved on and has been happy and has been married to her husband ever since and just been thriving even though that happened that definitely is not her legacy and what she will be remembered for she will be remembered for so much her iconic roles her speeches her commentary on sports etc all of these things you know the NAACP award this is her legacy this is who she is and she's just gorgeous right still she aged very gracefully too very beautiful but comment below who else would you guys like to see leave a fire emoji in the comments i love you guys so much thank you for tuning in until next time and if you like the music you're listening to the link is in the description bye